Well, first and foremost, I would just like to wish anybody who is celebrating Christmas uh, have a Merry Christmas. And for those of you who are not, well, I hope you are still enjoying the holidays and you're looking forward to the new year. Uh, the last part of chapter 10 will be us focusing on something known as antibiotics. So what exactly are antibiotics? Let's dive right into it quite quickly. Antibiotics are just drugs or chemicals, and they are able to kill bacteria or stop bacterial growth. So this is the first important aspect of antibiotics that we have to be aware of. Antibiotics are specifically used to kill bacteria or make sure that the bacterial growth is uh, prevented or inhibited. How that happens, we will talk about it a little bit later. So, for example, if a person is infected by bacteria, maybe they have TB or they have cholera in their body, those green colored dots are representing the pathogenic bacteria. And for example, when they go to the clinic or the hospital and the doctors give them antibiotics, you notice that the pathogenic bacteria have all been killed. So the person is no longer infected. So antibiotics are used as medicine to treat people with bacterial infections, uh, namely tuberculosis, which, are, which is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis or mycobacterium bovis, or also cholera, which, are, which is caused by Vibrio cholerae. Now, these are not the only two infections that we use antibiotics for. We can use it for a, an array of bacterial infections like syphilis, uh, you know, uh, staphylococcus um, throat infections. You can use it for bacterial pneumonia of any kind. Um, but again, you don't need to memorize all that because the only two bacterial infections in this chapter are TB and cholera. So antibiotics are used as medicine. Now, one of the very important things to know is how do antibiotics work? Notice I did not say how does an antibiotic work. I say how do they work, which means it implies that there are many different types of antibiotics. To name a few, they are penicillins, aminoglycosides, carbapenems, tetracyclines, cephalosporins, and others. Now, the good news is you do not need to know the ones from aminoglycosides to and others. Uh, you don't need to memorize those, but you do need to know penicillin. The reason why is because penicillin was, well, number one, we have to talk about um, how it works, right? Uh, but the other important historical reasoning is because penicillin was the first discovered antibiotic by Sir Alexander Fleming around the 1940s. So that's why penicillin is given, you know, a bit of extra attention. Before we go into penicillin in detail, I just want to talk a little bit about how antibiotics generally can kill the bacteria or prevent bacterial growth. You see, for a single bacterium to survive, I'm drawing out a bacterium here. You can see it's circular DNA. You can see some enzymes. You can see that green colored thing, which is a ribosome. And you can see the mRNA. And the mRNA is going through the ribosome through, uh, because of translation. So, you know, the bacterium is doing a lot of things. For example, for the bacterium to survive, it needs to synthesize new cell wall. It needs to carry out metabolic reactions using enzymes, for example, respiration to produce ATP. It needs to do transcription and translation, which is part of, which is part of protein synthesis. And also, it has to carry out DNA replication if it, you know, wants to reproduce. So, these are some reactions that the bacterium has to do in order to survive. So, remember, we want to use antibiotics to kill bacteria so or even prevent it from reproducing for example antibiotic a don't have to memorize this i'm just showing you that one particular type of antibiotic can be used to block translation another type of antibiotic which i'm going to call antibiotic b can be used to block transcription thus this prevents the bacteria from carrying out protein synthesis. And if the bacteria cannot produce proteins, they have a higher chance of dying because they need proteins to survive. Examples like enzymes and such. Okay, Some antibiotics can also act as inhibitors 
competitively or non-competitively. For example, antibiotic C can stop the metabolic reactions using enzymes, okay? So the bacteria's enzymatic reaction stops. And there are, there are other types of antibiotic, for example, antibiotic D, which prevents DNA replication. Now, you don't need to memorize all these examples because I did not show you those specific names of the antibiotics. I'm just telling you that different types of antibiotics can affect different parts of the bacteria. But what I want you to know, however, is penicillin. Because penicillin is a particular type of antibiotic that can prevent cell wall synthesis. You might be thinking, oh my God, how the hell does preventing cell wall synthesis kill the bacteria? We will talk about that in a while. But for now, the parts we have highlighted uh, just show you that these are the particular ways that antibiotics can stop bacteria from surviving. Before we talk about how penicillin works, we have to look at a bacterium under normal circumstances. So let's just look at a bacterium and drop... I'm drawing out a bacterium here. You can see it's circular DNA, cell wall, la di da di da Okay, now that's called a mature bacterium. Now, when that mature bacterium wants to reproduce, first, it will replicate its DNA as per usual. Okay, so you can see two DNA molecules. And then they'll undergo a process known as binary fission. And after binary fission, not mitosis, by the way, this is... I would like to remind you that when the bacterial cell divides, that is not mitosis. The reason is because bacteria are prokaryotes. Prokaryotes means they do not have nucleus, so they do not divide by mitosis. You have to use the word binary fission. All right? When the bacterium undergoes binary fission, um, you know, you can get two newly divided bacteria. Now, you see, Look at the size of the two newly divided bacteria. They're so small, okay? And they want to become mature, and which means for them to become mature, they have to, you know, enlarge. The problem is they cannot enlarge. Why is that so? Because the cell wall is restricting their expansion because the cell wall is there. So normally, what the newly divided bacteria will do is they will actually secrete a particular substance known as autolysins. You don't need to know this in detail, okay? But what autolysins do is they punch holes, uh, tiny little holes in the cell wall. Now, I'm representing the uh, broken down cell wall. It implies that the cell wall has been broken down, but in reality, what it does is it weakens the cell wall of the bacteria. The bacteria does this so that it can allow water to enter by osmosis and because the cell wall is quite weak, the bacteria can actually expand. So look at the bacteria. Both of them have now expanded, but the cell wall remains weakened or broken, right, due to the autolysins. So what the bacteria have to do now is they have to synthesize new peptidoglycan cell walls. And when they synthesize new peptidoglycan cell walls, they will produce two mature bacteria. This is how bacteria normally reproduce and grow. Okay, these are under normal circumstances for the bacteria, right? So they're just minding their own bloody business. But if you wanted to kill the bacteria, let's say these bacteria are dividing in our body. They are causing, I don't know, they are causing some sort of bacterial infection like tuberculosis or like even cholera, we will give penicillin. Now what penicillin does, if you remember, is it prevents new cell wall synthesis. Okay, so when the bacteria temporarily weakens its cell wall, remember it wanted to weaken the cell wall so that it can expand uh, as water goes into the bacteria. But penicillin prevents new cell walls from being synthesized. So the author asks, what the hell happens then, right? So the bacteria cell wall are not repaired and they do not build new cell wall anymore. What do you think happens if water keeps going into the cell? As you would have guessed, when water keeps entering, the cell, the bacterial cell expands and because of a very high turgor pressure, the bacterial cell will burst and they will die in that case. 
So that's the important thing that we have to know. Penicillin prevents new bacterial cell wall synthesis, causing water to keep going into the bacteria by osmosis, and the bacterial cells will burst due to a high turgor pressure. The interesting thing is, if you give penicillin to the mature bacterium, the mature bacterium is like, Neh, you can't affect me because my cell wall is intact. So I do not need to build new cell wall. It can only affect bacteria when they are growing. They cannot affect mature bacteria. That is the important thing you need to know about penicillin as well.